Greetings. Welcome back to Hand of Fate. Another round, and our game truly begins. Oh, we got the cards for ourselves. Bold woman, this one. She did not collapse when the Empire okay. did. No, she took up arms, organized her people, and vowed that in a country where death had gathered, she would be the one dealing it. Oh, it's hard. Yes, I believe that's how many cards. Ready to get those? Not quite. Hmm. Don't want to put the this one. Now we play for the cup, the first of my symbols. I have no idea who what that sound was. I've added some cards to spice up the game. In addition to the pain and game decks, there are now blessings and curses. Choose your steps carefully. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. The door of the landlocked labor opens with a creak, breaking the silence like a thunderclap in a tomb. The proprietor greets you. Welcome, traveler. If I can treat you with a hospitality, I must ask you a very important question. Have you seen her? Oh, God forbid, smell the kraken. It's a moment. The landlord stares at you in disbelief. He proceeds to rant and rave for nearly an hour about the dangerous crawls, feeding patterns and scent of the kraken. After which, you learn that his name is Carlo and in years past he sailed the seas as a captain. He now owns this inn and stays as far away from the sea as possible. After giving you some time to enjoy the warmth and some stale bread, Carlo approaches you. I've heard rumors of boats going missing from the small village port of Norwich. No survivors, no witnesses. Norwich is port, port is run by bandits, thieves and smugglers. There's no way to know what's really happening there. Perhaps you could have a look around and find out more. I would go, of course, but I had this place to look after. Carl gets through the empty, damp, ridden flea hole that he calls home. Well done. Thank you. Given how rarely one encounters the folk, you are fortunate indeed to meet Merith again. Or perhaps we are merely cycling around the wheel and dipping into the same memories time and time again. Hey. This game is still only beginning. New rules, new tools, new abilities. We have far to go as yet. Mm, that needs to go and... A choice. Select your desire. Ooh. It hits those targets with Are you cold. sure that's the right approach? I don't know. I hope. I don't know. Priests, gods, and eternal damnations. I have no track with any of it. You meet a wandering priest who greets you in a friendly manner. For a small share of your provisions, I will bless you in the name of the old gods. Okay. He says a few words in the language of the old religion and gently touches your forehead. It is done. 
blessings will remain always active and are never removed. Unless you die, of course. Then you're back where you began, as always. Every step you take consumes food, but you will also heal as you proceed. There's a token in it for you, if you win. The Mag in Burrow Inn is renowned for attracting the most talented bars from all around. You arrive there, weary from your adventures, but tonight's entertainment convinces you to settle by the heart for a while. Hours pass and the crowd starts to thin. The bard begins to move around the room playing requests for small groups. He serenades a pair of young lovers for a milk sound and is then generously tipped for leading a group of blacksmiths in a reckless chorus of foul language and the fox from the next town over. He approaches you. Well, 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 who we do have here? A most distinguished adventurer. No doubt your health and spirit ch chival a bar tribal is no good. You, sir, wrote a stirring ballad of bloodshed, heroism, and death. The bard sings for you the fable of the white minotaur. Come now, hurry up. We don't have forever. But we do. A legendary beast who is master of both might and magic. Its power is such that it has felled every adventurer, bounty hunter or treasure seeker it has ever crossed. At the close of his song, the bard leans in close to you and whispers, The white minotaur is no myth. I met a man two nights ago who hunts the beast as if he, he were its long shadow. I'd wager that any adventurer would be interested in the tales he told me over supper. All yours for a small donation. I've just given you the coins. I like the look of you. Those five gold sound fair. The bard bestows upon all of the knowledge that gleaned about the white minotaur. Your provisions are running low. Can you press on? I hope. I think we buy some food here, right? It's a show, but all. I know it's Tinker, but maybe he has some food. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Interesting choice. Get enough? No. What a shame. Win this and claim my token. One night, as you lie in a forest clearing, you are disturbed by the sight of shadowy figure watching from the darkness. Well met, the goblin exclaimed, stepping into the light and sitting by the fire. That's the unreal I've seen, been seen. The goblin makes himself comfortable. My name is Mr. Lionel and I have a tale of woe to share with you. And, perhaps, an opportunity for you to make a tidy profit from my misfortune. He goes on to tell the story of his troubles with the King of the Goblins while lamenting his subsequent banishment from the Goblin community. The King could have shown licency, he concludes. Given that his daughter and I were both drunk from the excellent delicious and brandy served at his coronation. Instead, he opted to make his first official act my banishment. Full of regret it though, for now it is time for revenge. He says eagerly, taking out a strange amulet. For hundreds of years, the golden kings have gathered treasure and hoarded it in a series of enchanting and ever changing treasure vaults. Only the golden king himself knows where his treasure vaults are hidden, but now I have a way to find them. I just need a lock of elven hair to complete this magical device. Yeah. Excellent! Just get the hair by any means possible. Don't worry, I'll find you again once your quest is complete. 
If that, he returns to the shadows and sits down behind a bush, watching me. A terrifying walk to get to the Queen. So many potential places for an assailant to get the upper hand. While journeying near the coast, you hear a rumble overhead. Falling rocks force you to take cover. You dodge the rocks by ducking into a small cave. A few minutes later, you emerge and climb around the new rock wall. You hear a voice somewhere above you. Did I hit him? You climb up to a head. You look the bodies of the fallen bandits. A coarse defense, but a valuable one nonetheless. You are close on her trail, and more confident than I had imagined. Perhaps she will play beyond this mark, and we will see your true metal. As dusk settles, you arrive at a small village known as Nasa Dim's Gate. The locals are gathered at a shabby looking inn. Something must be done, shouts a voice raised in anger. They took all our golden food, one person wails. Will nobody stand up to them? I will. They went that way, not an hour ago. We easily catch up with the band of Rufians. They seem overly confident and are in no rush. As you approach, the one who seemed to be their leader notices you. Kill him, he commands, gesturing towards you. He looks like a troublemaker. Okay. Now we begin to raise the stakes. The arena itself will fight against you. What? Beware of my traps. You gathered the stolen supplies and returned them to the villagers, saying, Those bandits will trouble you no longer. Oh, they weren't bandits, a child exclaimed. They worked for the White Castle. It was our turn to give tribute. Okay. Again, the stones tumble upon you. Oh. oh dear. Just when you think it's over, a large rock bounces off your helm. Looking up, you spot bandits to the hill above you. Maybe I'll get some food out of them. 
Or maybe I'll eat their dead bodies. Move quickly from here. There is little material gain to be made. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. You are minding your own business in a local tavern when suddenly three masked men burst through the doors, grab a young man from the bar and manhandle him outside. One patron bursts out in protest but is quickly silenced by the solemn stares of all those around him. If them be, Garrett, if it is his time, then it must be done. Follow the mask of Yep. You follow the masked man outside, immediately you are confronted by a large crowd, all wearing masks. Their leader speaks to you, woe the stranger. I really would prefer that no outsider witness what we are about here. I know this may look like a godforsaken thing we do, but you have no idea of our troubles, so I'll ask you not to involve yourself. I will not ask twice, we have no time for objection. The crowd turns and drags away the young man, there are torches burning among full light into the distance. Once the light has faded from the sight, you follow their path into the forest. You catch up with them and, to your surprise, they are gathered around a yawning portal that fills with malicious portent. Despite their disguises, it is obvious that none of the hooded figures will reach the side before them, and many are obviously destroyed. The captive is carried to the portal atop the shoulders of six people, as though they were his coffin bearers and he already dead. The young man's struggles are subdued by bones of rope. You burst forth from your hiding place and plead with the assembled crowd not to go through with whatever bizarre ritual they are engaged in, but you gain no support. Their leader eventually speaks above the crowd. If this man is so adam adamant to the that one of our own should be not be sent to the underworld, then perhaps he should go himself. You are immediately seized by the crowd and pushed towards the portal. Try as you might. They are too strong for you and you cannot escape. You stumble and fall into the portal. You fall to the ground with only a gentle jolt. You find yourself in a forest that bears a most striking resemblance to where you just were, but with two very significant differences. No, the crowd of masked onlookers are gone, and the sky burns with bright red flames. Out of the sulfur and flames emerge four foul hell beasts. After you destroy the last hell beast, 
The portal stirs back into life. You are lifted off your feet and sucked into the vortex before being deposited back in the leafy forest you were ejected from earlier. Your prize. Bandits, eh? Make an enemy of one, and you've made an enemy of all. Yeah. One can't help but admire their single-mindedness. They are like thirds. Noble causes turn to rotten enterprise. You may win this battle and send the queen to her rightful end. Yet, what have you gained in the process? Inevitable, I suppose. So often those who beat plowshare to sword die by the grim instruments of their industry. Still, she fought well and bravely, which is all I expect from my pawns and players. You have earned the first of the symbols of my power and passed the first gate. There is no turning back now. Previously I was merciful, but now I cannot be. It is begun. I crafted each of these cards over the course of years. You have taken them from me in mere moments. Not more. No, thank you very much. Bye bye.